It's been seven years since Battlefield 1 was released, which I believe is up there as one of the greatest FPS games of all time. Despite its age, Battlefield 1 not only holds up well, but continues to be a golden standard yet surpassed by EA and DICE, or any other military FPS since its release in 2016. Both mechanically and visually, the game is a masterpiece, and lends to an extremely immersive multiplayer experience. So it's no surprise that the game continues to have a healthy player base on both consoles and PC, and has even begun to rise over the last few months. Now some of you might remember what the legendary reveal of Battlefield 1 looked like back in 2016. Activision had just released its trailer for Call of Duty Infinite Warfare during the summer on May 2nd, and quickly became the most disliked trailer on YouTube. The backlash towards futuristic shooters had reached its peak amongst COD fans, with many begging for the return to World War II or any boots on the ground release. The timing couldn't have been more perfect for EA to reveal its next Battlefield title and steal away some of the COD fans a few days later. In fact, it was only four days later, on May 6th, when EA dropped the trailer for Battlefield 1. One of the most badass and unforgettable reveal trailers that oozed the grittiness of epic warfare. Did World War I look exactly like this in reality? Not exactly, but who cares? The game looked incredibly fun. And on the flip side of Infinite Warfare, this trailer became the most liked trailer on YouTube, with thousands of gamers online saying things like, Battlefield 1? More like Battlefield 1. The overwhelming good press for Battlefield 1 set EA up in a good position to make wildly impressive sales, and they did. Flashing forward to November 2016, Battlefield 1 sold more than any previous game in the series, and would go on to sell an estimated 15 million copies in the first six months. And as of 2018, an estimated 25 million copies were sold. That's over six times as many sales as Battlefield Hardline, and almost double the sales of Battlefield 4. And not only did Battlefield 1 sell very well, but the reviews were glowing, with many calling it the greatest war game of all time. Although, as we'll get into a bit later, some diehard Battlefield fans did push back against that idea, and shared a lot of frustrations with some of the more casual friendly gameplay decisions. So today we're taking a look at what made Battlefield 1 one of the greatest FPS games of all time. First, I think it's important that we talk about the World War 1 setting. World War I is not a common setting for video games, especially FPS titles. There were no shortage of World War II shooters throughout the late 90s and early 2000s, with dozens put out on a yearly basis, but almost no World War I games. And in the early 2010s, only one real FPS title released back in 2013 on early access through Steam called Verdun. So for EA and DICE to go all in on this setting for a high budget AAA Battlefield game was a massive gamble. But thankfully, the leaders of the project had a clear vision on how to pull it off. Patrick Bach, the general manager of DICE's Stockholm studio, said this when asked about the World War I setting. So we wanted to take that package and go back to the roots of what Battlefield is all about, all-out war, and show the world for the first time what World War I could be, what it could look like, sort of setting up expectations that, no, the game wouldn't be 100% historically accurate to the First World War. Instead, what it might have looked like in an alternate universe. And let's be honest, if Battlefield 1 did try to be as historically accurate as possible, it would have been far less exciting to play. Now that doesn't mean that DICE didn't do a great job at making the game feel very grounded in reality. Battlefield 1's battles all feel very plausible, gritty, and real, making for again a very immersive gameplay experience. Something they failed to recapture a few years later with the release of Battlefield 5. So if we're going to talk about what makes Battlefield 1 so immersive, it's important to talk about the game's atmosphere. World War 1 was the dawning of modern combat as we know it today. Tanks, airplanes, artillery vehicles, automatic machine guns, long range rifles. The advancement of technology, as it usually does, led us to discover new ways of killing each other in ways not thought possible before. And DICE managed to capture the reality of this modern combat flawlessly. Battlefield 1 is a haunting experience when running amongst the various maps, 
It's pretty wild that every single shot you hear in this video, from the tank shells, from the artillery shells, to the rockets, to the enemies that are screaming and firing their guns, all of the sounds you hear are made by real players, and everything you see happening on screen is also made by real players. And I think that's just incredible. When you play this game, it's like you're partaking in a movie. Or better yet, like you're actually in a war. Which is horrifying, but also extremely immersive. And I don't think anyone can deny that Battlefield 1 really captures the horror of war better than any other game that's ever been made. The atmosphere can be broken down into three categories, the visuals, the level design, and the sounds. Firstly, the visuals are incredible. Battlefield 1 still stands as the best example of photorealistic graphics done right. Seven years later, it somehow looks better than most, if not all, AAA shooters. The attention to detail, like mud buildup on your weapon when crawling, the smoke effects and lighting effects that react realistically, the reload animations that change based on your magazine size, the weather effects like sandstorms and clouds rolling through the mountains. It's all so well done. And don't even get me started on the perfection that are the nighttime maps. Night maps in far too many games are often too brightly lit and don't feel dark enough. Or sometimes they're too dark and don't accommodate the gameplay. But Battlefield 1 blends them perfectly. The destruction of the buildings look incredible as they crumble down to the ground. Grenades will create massive blasts in the earth that create new cover from the crater. Hell, even the airships can dynamically change the battlefield once they've been shot down, providing a whole new dynamic to the level. It's truly insane how flawlessly all of these things work in tandem to create an all-out immersive war experience. Level design is a term that often becomes conflated. Often you'll hear praise about a game's level design in reviews, but usually the reviewer means the visuals of a level look pretty. But rarely talked about in modern games is level design from a gameplay perspective. How well constructed are the levels that service the gameplay? And thankfully, level design in both meanings of the word are exceptional in Battlefield 1. The game takes you from breathtaking locations all over the world, from the scorching hot Sinai Desert to the tall peaks of the Venetian Alps. Each level is an accurate recreation of their real-life counterparts and fleshed out and tweaked properly to service the gameplay of large-scale warfare. It really is impressive how well DICE managed to design the maps that not only look impressive, but play very well inside a World War I themed shooter. Even my least favorite maps in Battlefield 1 are still a step above most other shooters' best maps. And what ties the atmosphere all together is of course, the sound design. Often overlooked when talking about immersion is the sound design of a game, but it's really hard to overlook with Battlefield 1 because it's so impactful to the experience. When you're charging forward and you hear that loud whistle blow, teammates running alongside you screaming, bayonets fixed, the sounds of artillery shells hitting nearby, and planes flying low overhead. There is nothing quite like that feeling. The gun sounds are also outstanding, from the mechanics like overheating, reloading, and of course actually firing rounds. They convey the grittiness of these old weapons in a very punchy and deafening way, especially the sniper rifles. Each shot always rings out like you've fired a train engine at the enemy. I don't think any game has or ever will be able to top the sound design of this game. And of course, we can't ignore the soundtrack when discussing the sound design. 
Hunted, Black Bess, Steel on Steel, The Flight of the Pigeon, and of course the classic Battlefield theme. These tracks and many others will forever be iconic and live in my head rent free. It's especially epic when a track kicks in right at the next push during an operations game. It's so badass. Not everyone was thrilled about the gameplay though. Some diehard Battlefield fans criticized the game for being much more casualized with the litany of changes and alterations to the formula that made the game a bit more accessible. Things like loadout configurations, enemy spotting and overpowered vehicles, among other things. The skill ceiling wasn't as high according to these players, meaning that it didn't emphasize skill as much as the previous entries. And while I understand some of these critiques, like enemy spotting especially, I'd argue that if you aren't a competent Battlefield player, you're going to get your ass handed to you in Battlefield 1 regardless. And doing well as an infantry player is still very much a worthy accomplishment. Now what about the war stories? Battlefield 1 single player component. When most players think about Battlefield, the single player isn't what comes to mind. It's a bit of an afterthought, and for many years EA and DICE have treated it that way as well. But out of all the Battlefield single player modes, I'd say that War Stories in Battlefield 1 is easily the best. It isn't one single continuous narrative following one character or squad. Instead, you get snippets of different characters all around the world when they're taking part in impactful moments of the war. There are six different war stories taking roughly one hour or so per story, and all of the war stories had their moments, but my personal favorite is The Runner. You play as a message runner in the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps during the British Army's landing at Gallipoli. The relationship between Frederick Bishop and Jack Foster was done extremely well for it being such a short amount of time that we had with those characters. And as much as it's easy to skip over the single player in a Battlefield game, I highly recommend you play through this one at least one time. Battlefield 1 continues to stand as a shining example of a AAA studio taking a huge risk and it paying off both financially for EA and it gave the fans one of the best immersive and gritty FPS games. And I believe it's owed to the fact that the game had a very strong and cohesive game direction. The project leads had a vision and stuck to it. They blended history and realism with fun frenetic gameplay. And I don't think EA and DICE will ever create a game as coherent or immersive as Battlefield 1 my all-time favorite game in the franchise, and one of the best shooters ever made. Secured the sector. 